All right, what is up my brothers? So in this video, I have this uh, clip that was forwarded to me of an expert family lawyer who's warning men about the kind of women that uh, cause problems in her practice. And this is a female, by the way, that's divulging this information. It's about a two minute clip, so let's just play it and then um, I'll add some commentary on it on what I think. I debated posting this um, because I know how bad it's going to be when people get this answer from me. Um, but there were so many people that asked um, that I decided after a lot of thought and consideration that I will go ahead and respond to the most asked question from my last video, which is what professions in women should men avoid? And a lot of you thought that those same professions for um, men that I told you to avoid would translate to women, and they really don't. I don't think that there's enough data out there for me to, to comment on that. But the few I've had one military um, female client who was pretty difficult. But other than that, um, I've not seen any correlation in those same professions. But I went through my case list. And if you have a problem with me giving an introduction to this, then just scroll along because I'm about to hurt a lot of people. So I'm going to explain what I have to say. Uh, and you're going to have to listen to it if you want the answer. Um, I went through my case list and there's about 60 cases on my case list. And there are some common professions that I see in women. The most common one that I see is teacher. The second most common is nurse. But those cases are not cases where the female is really difficult or litigious or anything like that. They're just kind of run-of-the-mill cases. Um, the most common profession that I see in the female parties in my divorces, and this is over 13 years of cases, um, oh my God. I'm so nervous, is um, stay-at-home mom. Um, hate me. I know y'all are going to hate me, but let me explain why. Um, number one, when you're divorcing a stay-at-home mom, they are paralyzed with fear, and rightfully so, because their whole life is going to change. They are going to have to go back to the workforce. They're going to have to possibly move. Their finances are about to be very different. There's lots of things that they don't know financially about what's going on. And so um, they tend to stick their head in the sand and stall. And so the cases become very contested and very expensive. The second reason that I see that stay at home moms end up being the most uh, common profession in a divorce is that I think there's a tendency, and this is completely my opinion, just based on my observations, they tend to focus so much on the children and the husband focuses so much on career that she, they, first of all, they don't feel appreciated by one another, but the husband starts feeling like an ATM and the wife becomes completely focused on the children and they tend to grow apart. So I think that's why it's the most common. That's not hate, just an observation. It's probably be my last TikTok. So see ya. All right then. So let's find out. Let's have a conversation about her findings then, which are interesting. She's essentially saying that if you're a father and you keep your wife at home, those are the most expensive and contested divorces that you can find yourself in, based on her family law practice. Now. First things first is that doesn't sound like a huge sample size. Uh, I think she said 60 cases, if I'm not mistaken, which is not massive, but it's not small either. I don't, I don't know that I would that I would lean on that too heavily. But uh, based on her experience in her practice, where where, where she lives, because I mean they like when family lawyers deal with divorces, they're dealing with pockets, right? Like they'll work with a demographic within a certain city, within a radius, because there's a lot of or there's still some face-to-face, -face, even though a lot of it's handled by Zoom now or uh, over phone calls. Um, but it's still relevant to mention that a lot of guys, especially the TradCon crew, love telling dudes to you know keep the wife at home, uh, put a bunch of babies in them, you know, go off to work and you know make the bacon, bring it home so she can cook it up, sort of thing. But what this family lawyer is saying is, in her practice, her experience is that divorces where it's a stay-at-home mom uh, are, are the worst, meaning that they're more often contested, which they take up a lot of time, financial resources. Um, I, can, I can assure you that, you know, divorces are not fun. So as a result, there's a lot of stress that's involved in that too. And it closes, it's a very windy day today. And um, as a result, with the stress function, 
the entire process is, is really going to drain your batteries, you know, for being honest. And that's going to exhaust the hell out of you as a dude. So fair warning, based on her experience, um, the whole notion of marrying a woman and then keeping her home and having her raise the kids has a risk profile associated to it. Um, you have to, like, you have to have solid game. You have to be on your mark. You have to have good frame in a long-term relationship if you're going to deal with a chick in a environment where family law is so hostile towards men. Because one of the outcomes, which she didn't talk about in this, is not only is it expensive and contested, it takes a lot of time when you're divorcing a stay-at-home mom, but if you're the guy that went out to work and made all the money and she stayed home and raised the kids, the argument that, that these women will always make is, well, my skills are out of date, you know, I gave up having a career to raise his children, so I am no longer strong and independent and powerful and, you know, blah, 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 like the toxic feminist narrative that, you know, women always regurgitate. I now need his money, his resources, and, and his support. Um, because family law ensures that she will still stay home. Uh, two homes now have to be maintained now, in fact, because he's got to keep a house and she has to keep a house. So he's now managing two homes and paying for both of them so that she can be a stay-at-home mom in the new house. That's just the way it is. That's how family law works. You know, if if you kept her home and she did all the child rearing, if you get divorced, which it sounds like is her most popular cases, she is going to not only probably have the kids still because she's a primary caregiver, but because she's a primary caregiver and still has the kids, you now manage two homes. You're going to see your kids less and a lot of your wealth is going to transfer over to her in the form of alimony and child support. Again, this, this is all dependent on where you live and what family legislation says where you live in your state or province, but on a balance of probabilities, that's generally how it goes. So not only are the risks higher of her divorcing you if she's a stay-at-home mom, but you're also gonna see your kids less and you're gonna expose yourself to greater financial risk. So, I mean, you know, the whole trad con argument of, um, you know, keep her home, find a good religious girl, conservative, blah, 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 all of that is completely out the window now based on what this family lawyer has just told us from her practice. So how do you deal with that? Guys, I'm gonna tell you, um, I like to be the guy that offers solutions to problems like this. A lot of a lot of fellas on the internet right now, especially on YouTube, it's like, look, there's a problem, just stay away from women completely. Well, that doesn't solve problems, okay? That's, that's just quitting, that's just opting out, which is one option. But at the end of the day, if you're a guy that wants to have kids, the whole frame and having a woman that's a compliment to your life and all that stuff is really important. But I think beyond that, you definitely want to structure your life in such a way where you're going to minimize risk exposure if you want her to stay home and raise the kids where she gets bored and wants to exit the relationship. You got to remember, like, as the kids get a little bit older and they start going to school, kindergarten, up through all the other grades, she's now home doing nothing. You know, she's purportedly a caregiver taking care of your house, but she's not really doing anything during the day. So she's going to consume that with her friends, yoga class, watching shows on, on TV. And what ends up happening to a lot of women is they get bored of being married. They get bored of being, uh, you know, like in a relationship. And, at, you know, as she mentioned in the video, uh, her focus becomes the kids. His focus becomes making money. They grow resentful of one another. He feels like an ATM. She feels like whatever. She's not appreciated or whatever it happens to be. And then she thinks, well, the grass is greener somewhere else because I saw Eat, Pray, Love the other day and it worked well for Julia Roberts or my girlfriend Becky. It worked out for her. You know, she thinks her life is better. And then she goes and pulls the plug on the family. And it's stupid because not only does it ruin the family, it also ruins the kid's opportunity to grow up with their father. It creates a whole cascade of problems, right? Like family law is very, very difficult. So again, like one of the solutions that you need to consider um, as, you know, like as a guy, if you're gonna have kids is make sure, vetting is an important process. And I think one of the most important vetting steps is make sure she's got a low notch count and she lost her virginity later on in life. Uh, statistics reveal consistently that women that have a very low notch count and lost their virginity later on in life. So what that means is a woman with a notch count of two that lost her virginity at 23 is a better choice than a woman with a notch count of 25 or 200 that lost her virginity at, you know, 14 or 15 or something like that. Fact of life. 
Um, these women stay married longer, are happier in marriages, less instances of depression, less chance of becoming a single mother, less chances of addictions and addictive personality traits like alcohol or drugs and stuff like that. You go right down the list, there's lots of data that reveals that. So that's the first part is make sure mother stock when you are vetting it, ticks off those boxes. And I know it's gonna piss off some people, especially some women. How could you say that? You know, men are promiscuous, why can't women, blah, blah, blah. I've covered it a million times on my channel. Women can't, it's just a fact of life. They don't get away with it. So there's that. The second part is I would, and you know, this is a harder part for guys, for most guys, I think, is live somewhere where family law isn't hostile towards men. Meaning, you know, you're you're not gonna get taken to the cleaners. Places like IE California and pretty much throughout all of Canada. Um, it's important to consider that given the environment that you live in. It's risk mitigation, you know. Guys, honestly, like I've said this a million times, guys will spend hours, days, weeks, months researching their next car, their next motorcycle. What's the compression ratio? How many miles per gallon? What's the acceleration? Luggage, uh, you know, space in the trunk, blah, blah, blah. But the first girl that touches their pee pee and makes them feel good or makes them feel wanted, I'm going to marry her. I'm going to put a ring on her finger, right? So it's incredibly important to turn off the afterburners, slow the hell down, and just understand, you know, what it is that you're marching into as a guy because it is a slaughterhouse, so walk into it with your eyes wide open. Anyway, I thought that was an interesting video, so I wanted to share it with you guys. Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below for the algorithm. Pinned in the top comment is a bunch of useful links to my book, my community, other uh, things like my supplement line, so go check those out. Hope you guys have an amazing day. Peace out.